Hey, Joe Burke, how are you guys doing? We are down here at the iconic dollhouse on Louis Boiter Avenue with Pamela, whose grandparents were involved in starting this phenomenal place. We're going to chat to Pam and get some idea of what it was like to be involved in this part of Johannesburg's history. Give us a little bit of history on the dollhouse, how it all got started and how your grandparents were involved. My grandparents came out from Provo, which is a town near Salt Lake City in Utah. And there's a dollhouse in Salt Lake City. And uh, them and a few other uh, Americans started the dollhouse out here. There were seven of them originally. Only four in my memory, which this was one of. Cape Town, Pretoria and Malvern. Malvern was the ice cream factory in the office. And every Saturday morning I'd go up to Malvern with my mom, go and get ice cream. What a terrible childhood I had. Forced <laughs> to grow up with fast food and, and ice cream. So, uh, what are your best memories of the dollhouse growing up? I mean, it, it's been, really has been a phenomenal part of Joburg's history. Absolutely, I mean, was, we ate here at least once a week and had ice cream from here every night of the week. It was part of dinner was our dollhouse ice cream and we really didn't have much to do with it until my mother started running it in probably early 80s for the last seven years and other than that it was just our family business that ticked away in the background. Now you must have some funny memories of things that happened here at the dollhouse? I can't think of anything funny that happened. I had to work here for a while and I got paid the princely sum of 100 rand a month and they still had the cheek to take 20 rand off a month for food. But um, the, the assistant manager lived in these flats over here. So when he wasn't working, he used to stand on the balcony and watch the people working. <laughs> um, I can't really think of any funny stories for you. Okay. Uh, so when did you guys actually, you guys sold the dollhouse? In 87. In 87. And I mean, that must have been hard, kind of letting go of that. Well, yes, my folks had asked all, all the children if they wanted it. So, you know, they offered it to me and I was already in the film industry, so I didn't want it. Both my brothers were living in Australia by then, they didn't want it. My mother was a in Fizemac and she couldn't cope anymore, so they sold it. Obviously tonight is a little bit bittersweet for you, kind of seeing the end of this era. Well, I think I signed off from here when we sold it. I actually haven't been back since then. So this is quite, a, a, quite an occasion to come back just to say goodbye. And the rest of your family, what are their thoughts on it? My cousins who live in uh, England, they're all devastated. Their father used to run the Cape Town branch. And they're all in tears about it. I'm not even sure my brothers are aware. <laughs> or care, sorry. <laughs> and what would you say led to the decline of the dollhouse? People just not going to roadhouses anymore? The area? I think this area has gone down a lot since I knew it. Um, so I would put that as one of the things. I'm not sure people do the same social things as they did in those days. Like go to movies and come here after a move. So, <laughs> I'm, you know, really can't say. Awesome stuff, Pam. Thank you so much for talking to us. And that is it. That is how we say goodbye to this Johannesburg legend with the power going out. <laughs> I suppose that's quite apt as the power goes out here at the doll's house. If you haven't managed to get down here, you've still got a few days to come and get yourselves a burger and hopefully they'll have some lights and some power for you. Other than that, have a fantastic evening. Cheers, Joburg.